What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode, we are going to be going over how to convert C++ and Blueprints. This is a tutorial that I've gotten requested a lot because I make a lot of my tutorials in C++ only, and I have some that are Blueprint only as well, and it is good to know how to convert between them if you are someone who prefers C++, prefer Blueprint, or in the given situation, you need to use one or the other. This is not an automatic process. There's no just convert button. You have to go and do it manually. But my goal for this episode is to get the basics down for people who are struggling choosing between starting C++, starting Blueprint, or if they just want to learn more about my thought process of why I do code over Blueprint or Blueprint over code and when. So long story short, we're going to take some random code from my third person and action RPG tutorial series. We are going to implement it in the blueprint so that it functions exactly the same as the code does. But this way you can see my thought process and how to see what I do in my tutorials or other people do in their C++ tutorials and then implement it in your blueprint project. And it's all about the right mindset. Now, since this is the introductory episode, it's going to be pretty simple but we could do more with this and get into more complicated examples if you guys are interested. Before we do hop into this, if you wanna get caught up in the series for making a game like you see on the screen here, you can go ahead and click this icon in the top right corner right here, and it'll lead you to the playlist of the Action RPG third person tutorial series. Additionally, if you'd like to support me and get the code in these tutorial series for free once they're released on the Epic Marketplace, feel free to check out the Patreon and the YouTube membership options that we have and check out all the benefits that comes with them if you want to support the channel. I'd really appreciate it and I want to thank you to everyone who has already supported me. You guys are so generous and I am so incredibly grateful. Thank you so much. With that out of the way, let's get into this introductory episode. What we're gonna do is start in the code, and this is all code that I have from my third person action RPG tutorial series. Like I've mentioned, I've already written this, this is not something you have to write, but assuming you were watching a tutorial and I was saying, let's implement the sprint, then I did it all in code, I can show you how we can do it in the blueprint. One very important thing you need to know when converting C++ to blueprints is the difference between a .cpp and a .h file. .cpp is a C++ file, and really it is the body file where all the logic is going to be implemented. This is like your blueprint graph, your event graph. Then you have the .h file or the header file, and that is where everything is set up. This is like all your variables that you have. I'm going to make a new folder in here to work off of. So for example, if I want to have a new blueprint class, so I can make a new character and we can call this blueprint We'll say CPP to BP conversion char BP. It's a long name, but this is the character that we can use to implement off of the basic character class. All right, so let's say we want to make this character sprint. Now, first of all, I'm going to need to give this a mesh. That way we can see it. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. If you're watching this video or you want to convert it from code to blueprint, you can assign the mesh to it, and then you can also put an animation BP on it if you want. So I can make myself the Pumpkin Hulk, which is just a Mixmo model that I have in here. The animation blueprint isn't set up for player inputs. However, it'll work for today's example. So I have a blueprint character here. Now say you're watching my video, and you want to implement my C++ video on sprinting. I will definitely be editing things in the .h file, and that's where I'll be setting up my variables. So let's go down and let's look at what we have related to sprinting. So I added a function for sprinting called sprint, a function to stop the sprinting called stop sprinting. And I have some variables here, is able to sprint, boolean, current stamina, max stamina, floats, stamina sprint usage rate, stamina recharge rate, floats. Delay for stamina recharge, another float. And so I might make all these variables and you're like, how can I create all those? Well, it's not so bad. Remember, if it's in the .h file, we probably wanna set it up either in the functions, in the variables section, or somewhere that's not in the event graph. So we're just working on the side here. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's make what we wanna make. So for the functions, we had sprint and stop sprinting that I showed off in the code. So I would come in here, add a new function, and I would say sprint. 
then I can also make another function and call that one stop sprinting. Now I've already done what you see in the code. So what you watched in that video where I made the sprinting, that's how you can convert that to blueprint. We have to of course fill out the logic, but in the header file, that's all you have to do to make functions. So that's very simple. Now let's go down to the variables. This is also very simple. So I have a Boolean is able to sprint. So I go into the code. I make a new variable that is of type Boolean. You can change the type by clicking this box here and we'll just name it is able to sprint. And I had a lot of floats. We really don't have to go over all of them, but we have, we actually have another Boolean can stay on a recharge. That's an important one. So let's add that one in there as well. Uh, can stamina recharge. Then we have all these variables, current stamina, max stamina, stamina, sprint usage rate, stamina, recharge rate, delay for stamina, recharge. You can see that these are U properties. U properties allow us to access these variables in the blueprint and edit them. But since we are working in the blueprint when we're making this file, there's actually no reason to do anything with any of those U properties. There are a few U property flags you may want to use, like category, for example, which you saw in the code here. I set the category to stamina. You can use this if you want by using the category section over here. I don't typically do this when it's in the blueprints alone because my blueprint classes don't have a ton of variables normally. But if you are doing this all in blueprint only, you could run into a case where that's important. And you can just select in this box and make the category. So stamina. And then it will get the little category right here so you can close this or open it back up. And since we are using it, I might as well put the other variables in there as well. Notice that once you have the category, you can actually select the drop down instead of typing it and just select it. And so now I have both of these under the stamina category. All right, now if I go back into the code, I'm going to make these five floats that I have and we might as well make all of them, even though it's a little bit overkill. Let's just completely copy the logic to the blueprint for the example. So current stamina, max stamina, stamina sprint usage rate. Let's focus on these three. These are floats. So I'm going to change the variable type to a float. And I want to call them the same thing. So we have current stamina, max stamina. We have stamina sprint usage rate, I think was the name. Then we have stamina recharge rate and delay for stamina recharge. Stamina recharge rate. Delay for stamina recharge. And now we have made all these variables. Might as well go ahead and put them in your stamina category, just like I had done in the code. Because why not? And now all of our variables here have been converted from the code to the blueprint. All right, now let's go into the code and we're done with the header file. I mean, you may have more in your video or your example that you're converting, but that's good enough for this example that I'm doing here. And so I'm going to go to the .cpp file. And so say I am in my character CPP. We have this function at the start. This is the constructor. The constructor is where you set your default variables and bind things in code. In the blueprint, you don't have to do this for a lot of cases. You can just set the defaults in the variables themselves. So for example, in my constructor, I've set is able to sprint to be false by default. So if I go into this variable, if I click on it, I can set the default value to false by default, which is unchecked. If I check it like this, it's true. That's not what we want. We want it to start out as false. Can stamina recharge. So the default value of can stamina recharge in the code is true. So if I want to start this variable as true in the blueprint, I can just check that little box. You can technically go to the construction script up here or click on it in the function list and then go and set your variable to true or false as needed. And this is basically like using the constructor, but I find it way easier to just set them on the variables as the default value here. 
and use the construction script for other more complicated things. Again, that is up to you. If you did want to set them in there, by all means do that. The floats is really the same thing. So I can go and I can look at all of these and actually grab them. So current stamina is 1.0, max stamina 1.0, stamina sprint usage rate is 0.05, stamina recharge rate is 0.1. Let's go ahead and see if I can remember all these. So stamina is 1.0, max stamina is 1.0, Stamina sprint usage rate, 0 0.05. Stamina recharge rate, 0 0.1. And lastly, delay for stamina recharge is 2.0. There we go. All of our values have the default value that we saw in the code, but now in the blueprints. Going back to the code now. The... Function, set up player input component. You might see me use this in the code a lot. And this binds input actions to functions that we call. Now, if you're on enhanced input, you can follow this episode in the top right corner for enhanced input behavior regarding all that in Blueprint because there is a lot you have to do. But if you were just using the regular input action, then there is a simple method you can use, and this will be a lot quicker. You won't have to watch that other video. You can come into your character here and search for the input action. So in this case, I want my sprint input action. And you'll see that there's an input action event called sprint. And this is something I have set up in my project settings. So if I scroll down to the input section, you see I have this sprint input action, which is implemented or triggered by pressing the left shift. And so now I have my input action here. And you can look at the setup player input component logic for the sprint here, and you will be able to copy this over properly. So we have the sprint input action, and this is a press. The input actions in Blueprint have a press and a release along with the key. The key is not needed for what we're doing today, but this would tell you what key was pressed to trigger that input action. So input action pressed or released this is the object that it's being called on. As long as we are in this blueprint, we'll know that it's being called on here, so we don't have to do anything with that. And then the function that we are calling. So for the sprint, I have third person tutorial character sprint, which means we're going to call our sprint function when this is pressed, and we're going to call it the stop sprinting function when this is released. Going back to the blueprint, we happen to have a sprint and a stop sprinting function that we can call. So sprint on pressed, stop sprinting on released. All right, and now the setup player input component from the code has been converted to the blueprint. Now we need to go and implement these two functions, so sprint and stop sprinting. I'm going to scroll down to them. So here's my sprint function, and here's my stop sprinting function. Let's look at the sprint function first. Now the first thing we check for is if we're not dead. Now. Technically, we didn't make that variable in the blueprint, and that was actually from another episode in that tutorial anyway when we went over dying. So it's kind of unrelated here, but if you want to follow this directly, I'll go ahead and do the same thing. So I will make our is dead boolean. I know this off the top of my head. It is a boolean called is dead. And if I want to be really, really precise, when I was making the is dead boolean, I can see what category I had given it. Probably health would be my guess and it is what I gave it. So now I can go in here and make the category health, and there it is, it's assigned right there. So if I really wanna replicate these functions, I wanna go into my sprint function that we created earlier. And the first thing we check for is if not is dead. Basically all this means is that the character is not dead. For now, the default value of is dead is false, and that is not is dead. So to copy the logic that we see here, if not is dead, we are going to grab is dead, pull off of it, and type not. And we want the not boolean right here. And an if statement that you see in code is basically a branch in Blueprint. So you can bring this result into a branch. All right. Bring this over. 
So this is the first if statement that we have in code directly mirrored. Now only if this statement evaluates is true will we go inside of it. Otherwise we will skip to the next line after it. So in this case, we're going to go inside of it if we're not dead. Well, currently in the blueprint is that it can't even be true. So we're definitely going to hit the true statement here. And that means we are alive and that's what we want. So we only want to be able to sprint while we are alive. Next thing we have to check is if current stamina is greater than 0.0 F. Basically, do we have any stamina remaining? And to do this, we can grab our current stamina variable, get it, then do float greater than float or just greater. Then remember that this is another if statement. So we want to make sure that we bring this into another branch. Only if it's true, do we do this logic. So if the character is not dead and they have stamina, we're going to go into the next if statement. I was printing a log that says we are now sprinting. This is just a debug method. But while we're here, we can go ahead and address it. So if you search for UE log here, you're going to see there's nothing here. And sometimes this is going to happen. And this is a lot of times why I think you guys wanted to see content like this, because what do I need to do to actually make this work in the blueprint when I don't know what to search for to find a node in the blueprint for something I saw in code? And it can be tough. You can look it up online. A lot of people have shared their findings of these. Additionally, you can just search around, which is typically what I do because I learn a lot of nodes from just searching. And so something similar to a log is a print in a lot of programming languages. And in this case, in the blueprints, print string or print text will do what you need. Additionally, if you don't want to do that or you don't know exactly what to search for, you can also look at these categories here. If you have context sensitive unchecked, then you will be able to find everything, but you might not be able to access it correctly from this file. If you have it checked, you'll only be able to access things that are relevant to your current context. Also, if I look up print string, for example, you can see that the category is development. So next time I go to find a similar node, I can scroll down to the development category and I can look at the different options that are in here. All right, and there we go. So we are going to want this log. So I'm going to want print string that will do for the log. And specifically, you see this prints to the screen by default. But if you press the little down arrow to open it up, I cannot print to the screen and only print to the log. And I'll basically have a UE log. And in there, the text that I had was we are now sprinting. There's a lot of fancy stuff going on in this log. You see log temp warning and the text. Really, this is the log that it's going to be printed to. This is the color of the text, which is going to be yellow. And this is the text itself that's going to print. So in the in string, we can put this text that we see. We are now sprinting. And that part is done. So going back to the code, I have some other things in here, like is zoomed in, which is just a variable for if we're aiming down sights with anything that disables when we sprint. Probably don't have to copy that over to the blueprint. I think you get the point. However, I did say that I would do all of it. So is zoomed in is a Boolean. Let's go ahead and add this is zoomed in. And it has a category. If I go to the definition of weapon, category weapon. So we can go back in here and give it a category of weapon. There we go. Now, when we start sprinting, we set is zoomed in to be false. So let's go ahead and do that. Set is zoomed in to be false. Additionally, we set the variable is able to sprint to true. So is able to sprint becomes true. All right. Easy enough. Now I update the character movements walk speed. So this one in code is a little strange because we are getting the character movement and we're setting the max walk speed to a custom variable. To copy something like that over to the blueprint isn't as complicated as it may look. The character movement is a component on the character. We can actually drag it into the graph right here, and we can drag off of the character movement component and search for the variable or function that we are setting or calling. So I have my max walk speed. That's what I want to search for. 
So max walk speed, and you can see there's a set max walk speed. And I can set it to the value that we had set in the code, which is 1500. Now the next thing in here is actually stop stamina from recharging for a period of time. This is a comment, but you can actually add comments in blueprints if you want to. Comments are just for you. You don't have to actually add them. They're for you and uh, other developers that you're working with. That way they know what's going on in that logic. So you can just type comment and there's an add comment box here. And you can put in the same text we have if you want. Stop stamina from recharging for a period of time. And you just put this in the comment text and it will show up up at the top here. You can then expand the box. And then it'll say basically the nodes in this comment are relating to what the comment says. Additionally, you can change the colors and the font size and a few other things, which is pretty awesome. And then we want to set our Ken stamina recharge to be false. So I'm going to set that inside of this comment. So Ken stamina recharge. And we're going to set it to false. Then we have a timer that we clear. It's not super important that you understand this exact line of code that we're doing here. This is clearing a timer, and really what it's doing is just resetting any timer related to stamina recharge. You don't have to know that because this is just a generalized episode. I just happen to be using the sprint function. But I still want to go over showing how you could do this in the blueprint. We haven't made this actual variable. But if we go to the header file, I may have made something like an F timer handle called stamina recharge timer handle. If you see this in the code, then in your blueprint, you can make one of these. You make a new variable and we'll call it the same thing, stamina recharge timer handle. And we'll put this in the stamina category. But for the type, we have to use a different variable and it is a timer handle. Now we don't have to default this to anything or bind it the start or anything. We can actually just leave it until we need to use it. In the sprint, we are clearing this timer handle so we can grab this variable, put it in here and type clear and invalidate timer by handle. If I'm in the code, that's not the same name. So you might get confused or worried. Why am I not finding what I'm seeing in the code? But they're not always the same. The methods are a little bit different. This is what we want in this case. So the code of git world git timer manager clear timer can be simplified by just dragging off the timer and searching for that clear. You can even write clear timer and it'll still come up and you'll get your clear and invalidate timer by handle. So it is okay if they do not match always, but try and make sure they're similar because there are some similarly named nodes that aren't the same thing. So you do have to be careful. And that is just a learning curve. You can't possibly catch them all or know them all. But that's the main thing we want to check for is that we actually have the set recharge timer handle being cleared and validated here. And this is our start sprinting function directly copied. So what was in the code for this function is now in the blueprint. Now the stop sprinting function, we really don't have to go over and do because it is so very similar, but I will go through it very quickly. So we have stop sprinting. Let's go to that function in the blueprint. And the first thing we check to see is that we're not dead. If we're dead, we're in our own state. We don't want to start or stop sprinting. So I'm going to grab my is dead. And I want to make sure we're not dead. Then I want to bring this into a branch. And only if it's true do I want to check anything else. Now in the code, we check to see if we're able to sprint. This is important again because, as it says, if the character has already stopped sprinting due to the lack of stamina, don't trigger the release event logic a second time. So we can go ahead and put this comment into the blueprint. And I'm going to change the font size, let's say 12, something like that, because I'm actually going to make a very, very small node here. Just want to basically check to see if we are able to sprint. There we go. Now going back to the code, 
we have another UE VOG, which can be basically just another print string again. And I'll open it up, and I'll make sure it doesn't print to the screen, but does print to the log. If you really wanted, I didn't do this with the sprint, but you could change the color to match the warning log, which is going to be some sort of yellow. And then I'm going to take my string and put that as the in string. We have stopped sprinting. All right, and now let's go to the next one, which is setting is able to sprint to false. Is able to sprint, it's false at this point. And we're gonna set the character movement's walk speed back to the default, which in my case is 600. So we're gonna grab our character movement again, set max walk speed, and we wanna set this to 600. You can clean this up a little bit. Okay, going back to the code again, we have one more comment, and this is actually triggering the timer, setting the timer for the first time. So if we go ahead and add one more comment here, I can put in the comment text, and maybe I want to shrink it again. And we're going to set this timer using the handle or trigger the timer. So it says get world get timer manager dot set timer and it takes in the handle that we had. There's also more that's going on, but I'll go over this in a few minutes or in a minute. So we're gonna grab our stamina recharge timer handle and say set timer. And you'll see that there are a few options. If you try and do set stamina recharge timer handle, you're gonna get the wrong node. So we figured out that's not right. What about start timer? Nope, that's not working. So you'll notice that sometimes when you pull off of an object, you can't find what you need. Are you looking in the wrong spot? Maybe, but maybe it's just different from what the code is, and that's not your fault. If you've never done it before, you won't know that. So what you'll want to do is search for it, set timer, disconnected from the, the variable. This time we don't want to use the variable because the variable, the timer is not the target. It's just one of the parameters. The next issue is which one we're supposed to select out of these options. We have a few here. Now, in the code, I was using the stamina recharge timer handle, and this is the current object or this character. So you don't have to worry about that. We're already in the blueprint for that character. The next parameter is the function that we're going to call when this timer finishes. And then there's the delay. So how long the timer is going to go for and if this timer should repeat or not. In this case, you can see I'm using a function that I'm going to call when the timer is complete. And so when I search for set timer, I want to use set timer by function name. It's a bit of a tricky one. Now, once you get this node in here, you'll see there's no spot for the stamina recharge timer handle to go. There's actually a return node that we're going to set this variable to. So it's a little bit different than what you saw in the code. And so on the other function. I'm going to put this down here a little bit below it for now. And let's go over the other parameters. So we have object self. This is what the this keyword is doing in the code. So you don't have to worry about that. Just leave it as self. The function name is literally the name of the function that we are going to call. In this case, it is enable stamina gain. I don't have this function set up in the blueprints and to set it up, we'd go on a never ending quest to keep going and setting up everything, but we can make the function and just not fill it out for the purposes of this episode. So enable stamina gain, that's the function I wanna call, but I'm not gonna fill it out for this conversion. So it has code in it, but we're not gonna fill out the blueprint. Go back to stop sprinting, and I'm going to write this function name in enable stamina, stamina gain. Now the time, I have a variable for that. That's my delay for stamina recharge. That's what's being passed in there. So I want to use my delay for stamina recharge for the time. Remember I said the looping, if it should loop and restart once it finishes, is false. So we want to leave it false in the blueprint as well. And then there's also a few additional optional parameters that I didn't fill out. These are if you want some sort of delay between triggering it and when it actually fires, but I don't need that. So now we can call this function and the return value should actually set our variable. So I wanna set the stamina recharge timer handle to the return value of that function. All right, and at this point we have successfully copied the code 
from those two functions and really the character in general for the sprinting mechanic over to the blueprint. So hopefully you'd be able to follow this now if you wanna see a C++ only tutorial and convert it to a blueprint. This is just one example. There are a lot and it takes a long time and a lot of learning and practice to get it right. And I still struggle from time to time, don't worry. So it's very normal, but just keep working on it and you will learn as you go. Now, since this character I have is the Pumpkin Golem and not the Assassin, there's a lot that's not going to work. I don't have the animation blueprint set up to work off player input. I don't have it set up to be possessed by the game mode, and I can change all these things and I can make it work. But really, the point of this episode is just to show you that's how you can convert it. This is a direct conversion from the code to the blueprint, and if you do this, you will end up with the same results as the sprint that I have from the code. Anyway, that was the purpose of today's tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned about converting code to blueprints. And if you guys are interested in seeing more examples of this or more complex examples of this, feel free to let me know either in the comments or join the Discord community and let me know what's up, what you're interested in. I just want to say thank you again for all the Patreon members and YouTube membership subscribers. You guys are amazing and I really, really appreciate you. If you had any issues or any questions about this, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you out. And if this helped you convert your project or your tutorial that you were looking at from code to Blueprint, then please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do, and I just really appreciate it. But anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.